Hey there, so a few weeks ago, I did a video on electric planes and uh, I got a lot of people telling me that there was a lot of stuff that I left out, which is, uh, which is fair. There, there was a lot of stuff that I left out. Now, one thing that I left out on purpose was a plane called the Solera 500L from Auto Aviation. And the reason why I left that one out is because it's not an electric plane. But I had people referring this plane to me actually even before the electric plane video, and I certainly got a lot of requests for a video about it afterwards. So I thought I might just kind of follow up the electric plane video with a video about the Solera 500L. So a quick disclaimer, I am not a pilot. I do not work in the aviation industry. This is not an area of expertise of mine, but um, I've consulted with a couple of pilots that have helped me out with some numbers and just some general facts and whatnot. Um, and there's a really great video by the channel Mentor Pilot that I'll put right up here and I'll put it down in the description uh, that really breaks us down really well. I suggest you go watch that one because he is an actual pilot and probably knows what he's talking about far more than I do. Now, just real quick, uh, before I get into it, you might have noticed already, this is not like my normal videos. I didn't spin around. I'm using my little uh, radio mic here and everything. And that's because I've actually got a lot of stuff going on right now. I'm working on a really big project outside of YouTube that I will be announcing in due time. Uh, but in, in the meantime, so I'm just going to do this really kind of quick follow up video. It's very lightly scripted. It's going to be a little bit different from what you're normally used to on this channel anyway, but this is similar to the kind of vlog style videos that I do on my second channel, which is called the TMI channel. And yeah, sure. Whatever. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll promote it on here. The TMI channel is my second channel. It's much more vlog style. Um, I don't really talk about the same topics that I talk about here. Here it's very focused on science and futurism, that kind of thing. Um, the TMI channel is much more vlog style, more about like what's going on in my life and just on topics that I don't normally cover here. So if you're a fan of that kind of thing, you can go check it out. I'll put a link up there down in the description, whatever. I'm done promoting it. So anyway, the Solera 500L. So it's, it's a really interesting plane. It's got a really unique design to it. It's gotten a lot of people really excited. Like I said, a lot of people are reaching out to me about it. So let's talk about this thing. And yeah, the first thing you notice about it is it looks really weird. It's a very weirdly shaped airplane uh, and it's mostly for efficiency. I will get into that in just a second, but first let's just kind of look at the specs around this thing. First of all, it was developed by Bill Otto, who is a bit of a legend in the aerospace industry. He worked at Los Alamos National Laboratories on missiles and torpedoes, specifically the MK-46 torpedo. He was later a chief scientist at North American Aviation. He then went on to start Auto Laboratories, which investigated airline accidents. You kind of think of him as Sandy Monroe for aviation. And then he started Auto Aviation in 2008, specifically to build this plane. So the Solera 500L is supposedly will have a range of 4,500 miles with a max cruising speed of 400 knots, which is about 460 miles an hour, 740 kilometers per hour. It's got room for a six foot tall person to stand, which is actually unique amongst private airlines. It seats six people and it's powered by a red AO3 engine, which is a V12 twin six cylinder engine, which is newly certified. It's got two halves independently controlled, so there's redundancy there and it runs on biodiesel and jet A1 fuel. But enough of the specs. Who cares about the specs? Look at this thing. This is the weirdest looking plane. And it looks like this for a very good reason. It's designed to create laminar flow. Now, if you've heard of laminar flow, it's probably from Destin over at Smarter Every Day. He's geeked out over laminar flow many times in his videos. Hello, Destin, destroyer of baseballs. And if I understand it correctly, laminar flow is basically a state of fluid dynamics in which all the vectors are traveling in parallel lines. Once they get all mixed up and turbulent, that becomes turbulent flow. And the idea is you want to avoid turbulent flow because that creates drag. The more laminar flow you can create over the surface of the airplane, the smoother it'll fly through the air and the more efficient it'll be. So this design combined with the efficient engine design is actually able to get this plane to 18 to 25 miles a gallon. I've had cars with worse gas mileage. You know, you compare this to a standard private jet, which can get maybe about two or three miles a gallon. And then there's a 747, which is more like five gallons a mile. So yeah, what we have is a small, super efficient six passenger airplane that can basically reach any city in the continental United States. You know, and that was a big part of the story around electric planes was that they have very short distances. They can only do little short hops and can't go very far. This is the opposite of that. This, this runs on regular fossil fuels, yes, but it's super efficient and can basically reach anywhere according to the specs that they put out anyway. But yeah, I've gotten all these emails and comments from people that are like, this is, this is revolutionary. This will, this will be so efficient that people will want to fly on this as opposed to the jumbo jets. It'll use way less gas. It'll be far less polluting and it'll, it'll transform the world. It'll save the world. People say this plane are going to, is this plane's going to save the world is what you keep hearing. And that sounds awesome. 
But is it realistic? Could this actually take over the airline industry enough to reduce the carbon footprint of air travel? I've been skeptical on this. Because, you know, like everything else, it all comes down to profits. If the airlines can't make more money by using this, this paradigm, then they're not going to do it. So I started thinking about it in, the, in those terms. You know, if I was an airline and I had the choice of buying a 747 or a Solera 500L, which one would be most cost effective to me? Well, an airline makes money by selling seats on airplanes and the Solera 500L seats six people. And a 747 can be configured in a lot of different ways, but I saw an average of about 366 people. Meaning to sell the same number of tickets that you could sell on one 747, you would need to fly 61 Solera 500Ls. So first question, would it cost less to buy 61 Soleras as opposed to one 747? Well, a little Googling told me that a 747 runs at around $20 million. And as for the cost of the Solera, in an interview with Forbes, Bill Otto said, quote, we're targeting the Pilatus PC-12 price range, which would put it at about $5 million. 61 planes at $5 million each is $305 million versus $20 million for one 747. And by the way, to make the cost about even for 61 Soleras versus 747, it would have to be around like $350,000 per plane. Now, what about fuel savings? Would you actually save fuel by flying 61 Soleras over one 747? I did the math on that. Let's compare flying a 747 versus a Solera for a thousand miles. So a 747 burns five gallons per mile. So a thousand miles would be 5,000 gallons of fuel. The Solera gets 18 to 25 miles a gallon, but again, you're flying 61 planes a thousand miles each. So how many gallons would 61,000 miles burn? 18 to 25 miles a gallon comes out to about 3,400 to 2,440 gallons of fuel. So you could say 2,900 to split the difference. So that is actually 2,100 gallons less of fuel. So right now the cost of jet fuel is around 108 a gallon. So you'd be saving about 2,100 bucks. And I should point out that jet fuel is actually really cheap right now because so few people are traveling because of the pandemic and everything. So it's it's very undervalued. Last year at about this time, it was about $2 a gallon. So you could double your amount of savings with that. And also Auto Aviation said that down the line, they could produce a hybrid engine or maybe even an electric engine uh, that would highly uh, increase the efficiency of it. So this is still, this is kind of a worst case scenario still. So fuel wise, it actually would save fuel and save money to fly 61 Soleras versus a 747. So fair play to the Solera. That's the good news. The bad news is um, every one of those 61 planes needs pilots. So a typical 747 has a crew of around 17 to 20 people, uh, three or four max of the pilots in the, in the cockpit. Those are the higher paid employees, obviously. And a Solera could fly with just one pilot. You don't really need a flight attendant for only six people. But again, 61 pilots. I feel like there's a 21 pilots joke in there somewhere. I'm just too lazy to find it. So I looked around and I found an average pilot per hour rate of around $50 an hour. And the flight attendant per hour rate is between 23 and 50. We could say 35 to kind of hit it in the middle there. So per hour, a 747, even if it had max number of pilots, four pilots, that'd be $200 per hour for the pilots, $560 for the flight attendants, which makes it about $760 per hour. The Solera for 61 pilots being paid an average of about $50 an hour comes out to about 3,050. To figure out how many hours, you could say a 747 cruise speed is about 580 miles per hour. That's about two hours for a thousand mile flight. A Solera cruise speed is 460 miles an hour. That makes it more like three hours for a thousand mile flight. So the crew cost to fly a thousand miles on a 747 is about $1,520. On a Solera for the 61 pilots, we're looking at 9,150. Add the fuel cost in the equation and the 747 comes out to about $5,520 and the Solera comes out to $11,050. So all together comparing Solera, 61 of them to a 747, it's almost twice as much for a thousand mile flight. And that's on top of the, the extra cost of all those airplanes. So yeah, the, the assertion that they're gonna be able to sell tickets at the same cost that a 747 would or a jumbo jet would, um, I find that kind of hard to believe. And I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge, because I know a lot of people are already talking about it. What about autonomous planes? Uh, that could be a thing. It absolutely could be a thing somewhere down in the line in the future. Yes. And again, with hybrid and electric drivetrains, it could get even cheaper. All that is true, but that is down the line. Now, there is another possibility, and that is that uh, I'm thinking about this all wrong. 
It's a very likely possibility, actually. You know, maybe I'm making an apples and donkeys comparison here, comparing the, the Solera to a 747, because it was never meant to compete with a 747. It just doesn't, you know, compete in that space. It's more of a private airspace disruptor. And yeah, if you want to talk about that, I think there is a good argument to make that this could shake up the private airspace. So yeah, according to Otto, the Solera has an operating cost of $328 versus $2,000 an hour for a comparable private jet. So on an individual level, amongst the private jets, yeah, it would probably cost a little bit less to fly in a Solera, which is awesome. Now, I will confess, I have no idea how they came up with that uh, hourly uh, operating cost. Um, I know there's a ton of variables that go into it. According to a pilot that responded on uh, Quora, he had this to say. Aircraft operating costs include both flight and ground costs associated with the operation of an aircraft, such as fuel, crew salaries and training, landing fees, ground handling, parking, gate leases and maintenance, just to name some of the big expenses. Look, if they could bring the price down to something reasonable, I would love to fly on one of these things. I think that'd be super cool. And the idea that they could um, make private flight more attainable to the average person is really exciting. You know, in the days of COVID, people probably want to avoid large airports and getting in, you know, enclosed spaces with a lot of people like the big jumbo airplanes. It's possible it could open up new opportunities for new companies to, to break in. It would open up a lot of jobs for pilots. And who knows, long term, we may see a whole new segment, a whole new option when it comes to flying, the, the flying taxi. It should be said, though, this does come with a host of its own problems. To quote a commenter named Scott Hilliard in my Electric Planes video, he said, quote, If you replace regional jets that haul, say, 90 people with small electric jets that haul nine, then you have 10 times as many planes to deal with to move the same amount of people. This means far more ramp personnel, gate agents, space taken up at airports, etc. The ability of the airport and the air traffic control to handle that amount of aircraft is wildly inadequate. And even if you move a lot of smaller aircraft out to smaller satellite airports, the air traffic control system and the airspace itself would quickly become completely overwhelmed. So all of that is true. All of those are very good points, but let's, let's look at the good stuff for a second. I know I've been really negative in this video and this is not a debunking channel, so that's not what I'm out to do here. There are a lot of reasons to get excited about this plane. First of all, it's just a first step. Um, there are future plans for a 1000L Solera aircraft that'll be about 20% bigger, could carry more people, more cargo and whatnot. Um, and who knows, this, this might be, this design might be picked up by some of the larger aircraft later on and lead to more fuel efficiency that would actually really make a difference in carbon emissions. The smaller planes probably have more flexibility than the larger airlines because you could land at smaller airports and there's probably less opportunity and less chance that there'd be empty seats on the planes. And like I said before, this does have the potential to really shake up the private airline industry and make private air flight more affordable for more people. And to be fair to auto aviation, this is the market they're going for. They don't say anywhere that they're actually competing with a 747 like I was doing earlier. Although one of the big claims on their website is, quote, the Solera 500L is leading the charge to reduce overall aviation carbon emissions and mitigating global climate change. And that's why I was comparing it to a 747 in the first place, because if their stated goal is to reduce the worldwide emissions of carbon coming out of the airline industry, then it's going to have to be more disruptive than just in the private aircraft industry. It's going to have to be competitive with the large 747s and whatnot. And I just don't see that happening. But I could be wrong. So the last couple of points, I saw a lot of comments pointing toward SAF, which is sustainable airline fuel. Um, made out of algae or made out of direct air capture, that kind of thing. I've covered the algae biofuels uh, in a previous video. You can go look at that if you want to. Um, and I think this is an interesting point to make. I know that there are companies like Carbon Engineering that are pulling uh, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide out of the air and refueling that, turning it into synthetic fuels. And I think these are part of the solution, absolutely. But so is the efficient design workings of the 500L. You know, we, it's not any one silver bullet thing. It's not going to be just one thing or the other. All of these things have to come together to really make that difference. And it's also worth noting that the airline industry is only 2.5% of carbon emissions around the world. So there is the argument to be made that maybe our best use of resources is focusing on those bigger pollution emitters as opposed to the, uh, the airline industry. But where are they right now? I think they just completed their 34th test flight of the Solera and they're obviously recording data. They're still implementing, they're still iterating, they're, they're making a little bit better. They are still seeking funding. Um, I think they're on a round, a round B, a B round of fundraising. I think that's right. According to some of the interviews I read, they're going to be getting um, certifications in like 2023 and hope to actually get them out there flying people on a regular basis in 2025. 
So everything I'm talking about here is really kind of jumping the gun. It's going to be several years before people are actually flying around in these, uh, which is a bummer because to be honest, despite all the criticisms I've made in this video, um, I think it's a pretty cool plane and I would, I would love to fly in one. Maybe I will someday. So all of that is a lot of talking by somebody who does not work in the aviation industry and uh, is just kind of kind of applying his own logic to it. But I would love to hear what you think. What have you heard about this plane? What gets you excited about it? What makes you think it's just not really going to be there? Um, share your comments down below, especially if you're a pilot or you work in the airline industry. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. And I would say to go ahead and correct all the mistakes that I've made in this, but I know I don't need to tell you that. It's going to happen. So anyway, thanks to everybody who pointed me toward this and who, um, you know, made comments in the in the electric airplanes video that kind of pointed me in this direction. I am always open to finding out about new things and I didn't really know about this till everybody started telling me. You guys are a huge resource for me and I appreciate that. But I think I'm gonna leave you there. Um, I appreciate you watching this. I hope this wasn't too weird being a little bit different kind of video. We'll be getting back to the regularly scheduled uh, lunacy that I do on this channel later on. But until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking this out. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.